Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Scenes. In this video, I want to show you how I take pictures of my tomahawks and how I do product photography. You will learn some tips and tricks that will up your photography game even if you are using a phone to take pictures. I'm not saying this is right, but hopefully you can pick up something useful. Here in a few hours, I will be delivering two tomahawks to a client and I want a digital backup, meaning I want some good quality photos. That way I will have them forever. So let's get started. My first tip is to use whatever camera you have. And for a lot of you, that is your phone. And that is totally all right, because if you nail the lighting, you're gonna get some good photos. I have a $2,000 DSLR camera here that I use to film and take pictures with, and I will be showing you some comparison shots. Tip number two, which is one of the most important, is to shoot in bright shadows. And what I mean by this is if you look around, I'm in the shadow parts because the tree is blocking the sunlight. And all of the hot spots where the sun's coming through the trees are in the other part of the yard, but I am still getting enough ambient light to take some really good photos. If you are shooting in harsh sunlight, that's gonna look terrible. If you are in too dark of a spot, it's gonna look terrible as well. So this is a good even lighting, that way I can get even shadows on my tomahawk right here. So now I am fixing to take a picture of the tomahawk here. I'm gonna do it at an angle where it hits all of the trees behind me and not my neighbor's house, which fence I have been destroying for years. I don't think he cares though. So anyway, uh, we are going to get at this angle and I want a power shot, meaning that I'm gonna get down here and let the tomahawk kind of be up like this. So if you watch movies, you will notice a lot of these shots called the hero shots. Okay, let's take a picture there. Fantastic. we are going to do the same angle with my iphone 11 pro max so let's get it set up here and let's do the same thing now the iphone it looks great all pictures that come out of the iphone usually do now let's look at my two thousand dollar dslr and of course it looks better it has the milky background and everything else because of my lens but if you look at both qualities here, there's nothing wrong with either of them with the lighting that we had. And I want to emphasize this, the lighting is what makes this photo. And I'm gonna show you how to edit this very simply here in just a second. And now for tip number three, and this right here is single-handedly one of the most impactful things I've ever done for my photos outside of lighting. And that is to use a reflective bounce pad. Now what this is going to do is to put some light up in underneath the shadows here of the tomahawk. So do you see the difference there when I do this? Boom, you see the light being reflected on there? That is going into the dark areas. And let me show you what this looks like. Let me get a little bit of light on there. Now just look at the difference in these photos right here. This is a stylistic choice, but I think it is just something extra that just adds a little extra flair to your photos that people are going to be like, wow, that looks really good. Okay, for the next part, we are going to be getting some different angles. And this is really important because with this art piece, people is going to be looking at different parts of the tomahawk. So I want to get some really cool stylistic photos here. And guys, as I'm taking this and I'm on video, I am reminded of all my mistakes that I made on the head and the wood carving. I got this a little too deep here and just all these thoughts are just kind of uh, not making me want to show you guys, but this is the part of artwork where you have to be vulnerable at. And I'm seeing some stuff now I need to clean up on the head before I give them to my client. But um, just own your mistakes, guys. This is part of it. And when you're doing this, be sure to take some videos because one day, many years down the road, you are going to wish 
you have done this with all your products. We are inside now, and one of the best pictures you can take indoors is not with all your lights on. It's actually next to a window like I am next to now. It is 6.30 p.m., and we have a nice glow from the sun coming in, and here's the key. We don't want harsh sunlight to come through the window. We want the soft glows, and that is going to make for a nice picture. So let's take the phone and take a quick picture. And if we use the reflective pad, look at the light there. How it's just changing the lights subtly. Both of these photos from my iPhone turned out really nice of this wood burning. And when you can't go outside, getting up next to a window here is always the way to go. We are back in the studio and I want to show you guys how to do some simple edits. Now hang with me because these will be simple. I'm not gonna go over your head. I just wanna show you my little tips that will make your photos look that much better. Before we do that, let me give you tip number four right quick, and that is to use different locations or props when you are taking photos. I am the world's worst about this, but just going around and getting some different pictures can add a different feeling and flavor to your photos. Play around with some different locations and props, and I'm sure you will come out with some photos that look amazing that other people will want to see. Now, tip number five, editing. Yes, this does not have to be complicated. In fact, I'm going to show you a very simple method and I want you to hang with me here because once you have this skill under your belt, you will love it. It will make your photos look so much better. We are first going to edit on the iPhone, then switch to the Mac here and edit in Lightroom for my pictures that I took with a DSLR. If you are on an Android phone, that is all right. Just use the principles that you learn here. So look at this picture here directly out of my phone. It doesn't look bad, but I think the tomahawk needs to brighten up just a little bit. And let's add some definition in there. So I'm going to click on edit. If I click auto, it automatically adjusts to the iPhone's algorithm, however they do their automatic settings, but we are going to go manual. Number one, we are going to go to the exposure. If I turn this way up, you can see that's too much. So I'm just gonna turn it up just a little bit. And these are just some small tweaks that we are going to make that makes it look better. Let's go to the shadows. I'm going to increase the value here probably to about 26. That's looking pretty good right there. After we raise the shadows and brightness, you can see the tomahawk is brighter. But now let's add some contrast. Contrast is the ratio between the whites and blacks. Of If I do too much, it's gonna look bad, or do too um, little, it's gonna be just kinda white and washed out. So we are going to add just a tad bit of contrast. Now for the brightness, we're gonna add just a little bit. And the black point is how deep the blacks are. So we are actually going to turn that up just a hair. Now for the saturation, I am a fan of saturation as long as we don't do too much like that, which you see a lot of beginner editors do. We're just gonna take that up just a tad bit and take the vibrance up just a hair. And there we go. So we're gonna go to original and now after. It's subtle, but it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go back in the highlights. If you see in the background above the tomahawk head, I'm washed out there, that's distracting but it's all right. I am going to turn the highlights down just a hair. It looks like I look at the before, now the after. Before and after. So much better, right? And the only thing I do not like about this photo, some of the background is distracting, but it is what it is, and you guys get what I'm saying here. If you got confused by that, it's all right. Just spend some time with your existing photos that you have right now and increase your knowledge just by a little bit. A part of this game is just being aware of knowing what to look for. So just play around with it. For those of you that have Adobe Lightroom, which is the editing software that I recommend and that I use for my DSLR pictures, here is one of the first pictures I took without the bounce pad. And I nailed the settings pretty much. Everything is good and flat, but I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit. Turn up the contrast, just like we did with the phone. Turn down the highlights just a little bit. And like I said, the highlights are these blown out parts like this. And sometimes leaving them in there is an artistic, I guess, expression, you could say. 
So now we are going to take the clarity up just a little bit. This would be basically the sharpness with the iPhone. I'm gonna take that up. And as far as the vibrance, if I take this up, you can see how just green that is. So I'm going to take that up just a little bit, as well as the saturation. And that would be my normal, just flat photo edit. It's good, it's clean, it doesn't have any filters on it, which could make for a cool looking picture, but this is really close to where I want it. So if we wanted to go beyond this, let me show you some advanced techniques. And what I would do here, is go to my brush. And if you are not familiar with Lightroom, I know this may be, this might be over your head, but take my brush, we're gonna get the clarity and the texture, and we're gonna just paint the handle here. I'm gonna get the head in there, that in there. Now let's look at the before and after of this. This is before and this is after. And if I wanted to get crazy with it, I could add some what you call vignette and basically make the corners of it dark. That way it really just moves your eyes into the center of the photo is basically where we would want people to look anyway. Now for this style of photo, this gritty style, if I turn my vibrance down and make it not quite black and white, but have some color in there, but just take the vibrance down, increase the clarity, you can make like a gritty looking photo. If you've ever seen a war movie like Saving Private Ryan or something like that, this is basically the video editing style that they use. It would take that and make it just a little bit more blue, a uh, lot like this, but you can see how this correlates with movies and just all kinds of different things just from a photo. So we're gonna take everything back here and I think I'm gonna leave it right there. I think that's a cool looking photo. Now we are going to take a look at the pictures with a bounce pad. And this is without the bounce pad and this is with Look at that. Now you notice I made this picture just a little bit darker. So we are going to just basically do the same edits that we did earlier. Now we're gonna go back and forth. This one versus this one. And this is just a stylistic choice. And since I'm gonna be using this picture, I'm gonna take a brush and just kind of expose the head just a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna take a brush, hit exposure, and watch this we are just going to paint on that light there. And this is super fun, guys. So here is a before and after. I know it's subtle, but it's looking pretty good. If I wanted to get crazy, I could tell Lightroom to just mask the background. Now I could take the exposure down and that actually looks pretty good right there. It just makes the tomahawk pop out at you. Look at there. That versus this or this. So just kind of a neat trick there with the bounce pad. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and more importantly that it encouraged you and it gave you the knowledge and skills to go out there and start taking pictures. You don't have to have a big camera. Like I told you, you can use your phone and you can make some great pictures. And as far as the editing side goes, just kind of dabble in it. This is meant to be a beginner's video. Obviously we can get way more complex if we wanted to, but I'm showing you guys what works for me and I get a lot of good feedback from it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you would like to watch some more, click one of these right here. Talk to you soon.